You and the elf eventually reach a gondola lift station. Okay. He says the gondola lift will take you up to the water source. This is as far as he can bring you. You go inside. It doesn't take long to find the gondolas, but there seems to be a problem. They're not moving. Ah! You turn around to see a slightly greasy elf with a wrench and a look of surprise. Sorry, I wasn't expecting anyone. The gondola lift isn't working right now. It'll still be a while before I can fix it. You offer to help. The engineer explains that an engine part seems to be missing from the engine, but nobody can figure out which one. If you can add up all the part numbers in the engine schematic, it should be easy to work out which part is missing. The engine schematic, your puzzle input, consists of a vis visual representation of the engine. There are a lot of numbers and symbols and you don't really understand, but apparently any number adjacent to a symbol even diagonally, why has it got to be diagonally, is part of a number and should be included in your sum. Periods do not count as a symbol. Diagonally is a problem. Okay, so we need to like scan the region around a number for a symbol. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be the, the boring way. Um, the boring way is reading it into a, an array, like, like doing it the programming way instead of the combining core utils in an interesting way. All right, we're back to square one. We want to find numbers. So we want to walk through this character by character. So let's set row equal to zero, column equal to zero. How do you do this? It's like... All right, we sure are looping. If C... Okay, we can detect numbers and not numbers, lol. Let's see if this is happening. No? Uh, the break. Uh, what do, we, what do we do? Do we not need state? We don't need state. We say number equals nothing. Okay, here's our numbers. <laughs> that was a convoluted way to get there. But this is just all of the numbers because we need to exclude some of the numbers. So we're going to need we're going to need some additional data here. We save the row in the column. SR is going to be like starting row, starting column of the number. So now when we do this, we can we can do like we can we can locate the numbers. Now we just need a function that can take this information and scan the area around the number. So let's make a function called scan. Let's make this exit the whole program after we're done. We're going to do one number. R equals SR minus one. Uh, 
Uh, less than or equal to len plus sr. Okay. Negative one, zero, one, two, three. Is that right? So negative one, zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Need a second loop for columns. All right. That's our, that's our loop. We need to figure out if we're on the edge or not. We don't want the actual number spots. Well, okay, first let's check if we're out of bounds. If r is less than zero, continue, okay. If r is greater than height, greater than or equal to height, greater than or equal to width. So we go grid, grid. So this would be the row number. And then we need, okay. So position would be C and then one. What the fuck happened here? <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, how do you set up a uh, glob? Um, okay, this looks right though. Dot 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 star. So does it work? Well let's just go through. So 467 is touching a star. 114 isn't, so it gets filtered out. 35 is touching the star. 633 touching the hashtag. Okay, 58 got filtered out. That looks like it's working. Do we just rip it? Oh, right, we have to add up all the numbers. We have a number. Let's go. Okay, part two, um, I'm, really, I'm really concerned. The engineer finds the missing part and installs it in the engine. As the engine springs to life, you jump in the closest gondola, finally ready to ascend to the water source. You don't seem to be going very fast, though. Maybe something's still wrong? Fortunately, the gondola has a phone labeled help, so you pick it up and the engineer answers. Before you can explain the situation, she suggests that you look out the window. There stands the engineer, holding a phone in one hand and waving with the other. You're going so slowly that you haven't even left the station. You exit the gondola. The missing part wasn't the only issue. One of the gears in the engine is wrong. A gear is in a star symbol that is adjacent to exactly two part numbers. I'm beginning to regret doing it the way that I've done it. Its gear ratio is the result of multiplying those two numbers together. This time you need to find the gear ratio of every gear and add them all up so that the engineer can figure out which gear needs to be replaced. So we're just doing the gears. I think we're going to do it the exact same way. When we find a star, we just need to keep metadata. We'll, we'll like keep a table. Uh, get rid of this for now. This is our list of part numbers. Okay. I have an idea. Gears. So if it's equal to a star, we're going to create a gears RC So we want the number. Okay. So these are the gears. We could just grab for the lines that have comma dot star comma. It's not comma dot star comma. It's this not comma not comma star end. Yeah, there we go. 
Then we do TR comma star BC. We've been here before. Paste SD plus BC. Four, six, seven, eight, three, five. All right. Easy. Sample input. That's a big number. It's just it's just really simple. Brian, what was your problem with this one? It's just it's just too simple. I think they need to make these harder. Okay, I need to stop being so cocky. We're only on day three. This is gonna get out of hand.